Hello and welcome to today's episode of Bread Bowl. We're here for Bread Bowl season number two, episode number five. Today on Bread Bowl, we're discussing my interest in history. Uh, it's not something I ever really mentioned on YouTube, uh, just because it didn't really ever fit with what I was doing, but I've always just had a interest in history. Uh, it's been something that I've, I don't know, I guess it's something that I've liked for a long time. It must be something I just get from my dad. I know he's like, he knows a lot of the stuff. He, I didn't know this until the other day, but he said he had a, one of, part of his degree from college is in history, which I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know that, but he told me that. Um, so, or, I mean, I'm sure he probably said it before and I just forgot, but. So maybe that's where I get that from, just liking history. But history was always a subject that I did good in school. That was the best one. That was, like, the one class, I guess you said, that I would look forward to in school. Um, whenever I did something, I always just liked uh, that. And for me, my interest... Uh, is a lot in 20th century history. Uh, obviously, 20th century history is... I mean, all history is connected in some way. But 20th century history, to understand you have to get connections from before. Uh, so, you know, going back and finding out things from 19th, 18th century is a lot of very important as well. Um, but it's just like, world. it's the history of the world. Uh, I don't necessarily just focus on and those people that are just like super just into history from America. Or, you know, that's the example, being in America. Or, you know, wherever, whatever country you're from. You know, the history of just your country specifically. Uh, that really isn't necessarily where my interest is. I mean, I know... I don't that I don't have an interest in American history. If I was picking uh, specifically a country, that would be the second country. Besides Korea. Because that history is one I really uh, want to know more about as well. Uh, and Korean history isn't necessarily defined to 20th century history. Uh, Korean, my interest in Korean history is like further back than that. I, I want to know like, because Korean history is different than learning American history, uh, which I'll explain why. I mean, obviously, but we'll get into that. Um, but uh, looking back, uh, things that I just have an interest in, I really just, it started for me with history in World War Two, uh, Europe specifically. Uh, I do have more interest in Pacific now, um, but that was it before it was Europe specifically. Um, I don't know. I always thought that that was just super interesting. Uh, World War Two, those years from 40 to 45 were, to me, very interesting but you know you got a good time before that and that's when i got more interested in world war one uh because obviously world war ii was affected by world war one obviously it's in the name uh the results of that world war one once germany and austria and uh whatever other one uh well those were the big ones once they got beat uh how much specifically the countries that won took away things from germany caused them to then, you know, they weren't allowed to do a lot of stuff. They didn't have a lot of resources. They had a terrible economy. Uh, and then they had Hitler come in and say, oh, we're fixed economy, we'll do this, whatever. And then slowly built up a military, um, secret, sort of secretly. It wasn't really secret, but the other countries didn't really care. Then Germany went in and took over most of Europe. And then it became a problem, <laughs> or it was becoming a problem. Like, they didn't know about all the genocide stuff. Uh, that was later on that they found out about that. I mean, they didn't know about it, that it was happening uh, during the war. It wasn't until um, a lot of the militaries came across it. They kind of knew it was there, but they couldn't really do much about it. Uh, I think it was the Soviet Union that came across it first, uh, which is another interesting element of it because then that leads into the cold war which is another part i'm really interested in but basically the way that goes is germany said well, there was a thing between soviet union and germany like hey we don't really like each other but let's be nice to each other 
and then Germany's like, yeet, yeet. You don't go into the Soviet Union and just try to attack in the middle of winter. <laughs> Had Germany tried it once before, and France tried it before. It's a terrible idea. They're prepared for that, because <laughs> uh, it's cold. Uh, but either way, they went into the Soviet Union, specifically the Russian part, uh, got destroyed, and that's when they started losing. Plus, you had, you know, America coming from the other side, so they went in. And then that's when the Soviet Union noticed the concentration camps. Once they got into Poland and areas like that, when they found the uh, camps and they came across them, they're like, oh my god. That is not what we expected to see. Uh, obviously, seeing something like that is not something anybody wants to see. Uh, but they came across that, and then, you know, once they lost um, Europe, that part fell. Uh, obviously, there's two sides of it. Uh, but that was the part I was really interested in to start. Um, obviously, in the Pacific, that was probably the part that I actually lost them more uh, in the war, the countries. I mean, each country, Japan and Germany, each made one major mistake, um, which ultimately was to the two countries that destroyed them. Uh, Germany trying to attack the Soviet Union, and then Japan bombing Hawaii uh, was a bad idea. <laughs> Basically, Japan went through and they took over all of, well, they took over a lot of areas. Uh, obviously, the major point of that is Korea. You know, it was one country. Uh, they took over that through means that weren't necessarily good. Uh, they didn't really have a say in being taken over. I mean, not that they would, but they sort of... They were kind of tricked into being taken over uh, from all the stuff that I've read. Uh, and then, you know, they went through and took over a lot of islands and even took over part of China. And then that, they decided, oh, we can bomb... Pearl Harbor, which then America's like, yeet, yeet, and went in and wrecked all the, uh, they went through and took all the islands and then obviously nuked them, um, which, the nuke wasn't necessary, uh, because apparently they were going to surrender a couple days after, but they did it, and that set off another thing, which was the Cold War, um, because another thing that's a whole element in this is the Soviet Union knew America had nuclear weapons. So they're like, hey, let us see how to do that. And America's like, no, 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 you're the next enemy. Uh, so once they, together, uh, defeated Germany and Japan and Italy, um, they then went against each other. Uh, obviously, not through means of necessarily war between each other, um, but, you know, they use other countries. Um, Korea, Vietnam, countries in the Middle East. Uh, that's honestly how the Middle East is the way it is, but we're not going to get into that part. Modern history, I mean, once we get to, like, the 90s, I don't really care. The last, like, 30 years, I don't have an interest in that, necessarily. Um, it's just interesting to see the effects of these things. So, the main one for me from the Cold War uh, events, obviously, with, like, things where both countries are building, you know, nuclear missiles and putting them in countries near each other and um, you know, racing to build rockets to go to space and all the stuff they did to compete. Um, you know, it was just interesting. But from the side of my other interest in Korean history, that's the Cold War had a big impact on that, obviously. Um, once Japan got yeeted, um, for some reason they thought dividing Korea into two countries was a good idea. Um, Obviously, both areas controlling it, uh, but both controlling one part. You know, South Korea controlled by America. America put in their government of their choice, and then, you know, North Korea being controlled by the Soviet Union put in the government of their choice. Um, now, both countries believe they control the entire area, uh, still to this day. Uh, they both, you can see what areas they claim, uh, as theirs, and it has the whole peninsula. But the thing is, obviously, the Korean War was its own element within the Cold War. And also, I was saying countries fighting through other ones. Obviously, they didn't want to be... Uh, neither country really agreed 
to be separate. They both kind of decided to weaken on the whole thing. Because, um, you know, I think a country like that shouldn't really be divided. Uh, it doesn't really make sense. Uh, but either way, uh, you know, obviously neither one really wanted to not control the whole thing. Uh, obviously, the communist countries are more likely to go about their actions uh, in that sense than the ones that aren't. But, you know, North Korea's like, hey, we're going to take over the whole thing. They got really far all the way to the bottom, uh, and they were able to defend off because they were getting help. I, I don't know, it was China or Soviet Union, one of the two, or both of them, I don't know. They were coming in and they helped push all the way down to the bottom, and they were able to hold. Then America, you know, they were able to, America and South Korea were able to push back up and take almost the whole area, and then they are going back and forth. I think Seoul was taken over four times. Uh, so things like that. It's just, like, interesting to sort of see the way that um, the things were, I don't know, fought out. Obviously, you don't want countries to fight each other, but when it happens, to sort of see the way that they went back and forth, uh, things like that. Uh, and ultimately see how that really, like, impacts the area. Because, I mean, you can see the... In current news, and this is where the current part is uh, important. You can see how the effects of that. That's one of the only remaining things from the Cold War, really. Uh, obviously, the destabilization of the Middle East. That was an effect of the Cold War, but... Um, the issues there are obviously something else. But within Korea, uh, in both countries, you see that now. And how it played out. Especially it was really a uh, highly publicized thing in 2017, 2018, on uh, the beginning. Because 2017 they are building nukes and then, you know, it was Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un were going, you know, back and forth, dabbing and yeeting at each other. Um, people thought there was going to be nukes then and obviously things stopped with the Olympics and uh, the meetings with Moon Jae-in and um, Kim Jong-un, they met and obviously discuss things, but, uh, you know, things like that, and then Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un had their photo shoot together uh, twice, but, <laughs> you know, things like that, they uh, seen the effects of that in current things. That's another thing, getting to the part specifically with Korea. Um, for me, it's just interesting to sort of see how Korea was before uh, it was divided and you know the times before i think 1910 was the official time japan was trying to do stuff before but i think 1910 is the official date of you know see their dynasties that went for a long time and you know how curry was three different areas like a really long time ago on uh, how it went up further into china and sort of the impact of china and honestly the development of a language uh, because i thought chinese was uh well, Chinese with the Korean letters is kind of hard, so they just made their own language. But, you know, to see sort of things like that, and uh, it's just interesting to sort of learn that stuff, and then um, see how things are just, you know, everything's affected by things. There's still issues between South Korea and Japan, uh, North Korea and Japan, but, you know, it's not talked about as much. Uh, with South Korea and Japan, because of what they did, and Japan really did a lot of bad things. Um to the Koreans. Um, they forced them to not use their own language. Um, the way that they treated the women was really bad. Um, you know, they were sex slaves or whatever. They had, uh, the way I said that sounded really bad, but you know, they had them be sex slaves. It's whatever they want to classify them as, what I should say. Japan denies that they are, but, um, Japan's like, no, they did it willingly. It's like, no, they didn't. Uh, the few remaining women from that obviously deny that that's what happened. They didn't like, no, we didn't do that willingly. Um, they were tricked into going to, you know, the parts of China that were controlled, or parts of the country. Uh, so, you know, the way that they were treated was obviously really bad. Um, but, you know things the way that they treated them obviously treated 
Koreans in general was not very good. Um, and I know that there's even parts in Japan now where, you know, being Koreans less than being Japanese, uh, from things that I've read. And it's just, uh, you know, it's not really the whole thing now. It's changed, but there's still parts of it where that's a thing. Um, and it's just, uh, I don't know. It's just kind of crazy to read some of that stuff and uh, learn all these different things. But, you know, history to me is, there's obviously heavy uh, topics like what we talked about moments ago. Or, you know, uh, the way that people were treated by other people is just, you know, not good. But, I don't know, it's always been an interest to me of history and uh, since I've gotten into Korea in the past, I don't know, almost two years now. Uh, it's just interesting to sort of learn about another uh, country's history. So, that's that. And for me, uh, real quick on American history. Uh, in America, I don't necessarily have an interest on American history. Um, I don't know. It's just not something that I ever really got interested in. America's... The only part, again, about American history that I have an interest in is the Cold War. Uh, and World War One and World War Two, but you know, history specifically about what happened in America. I mean, of course, there's so many interesting things to do, but I don't know, there's just, I've never gotten interested in things. Obviously, uh, every country has their own bad things that they've done to people. Um, and seeing the way that Indians were treated uh, when they were moved. I shouldn't say, the way Indians were treated when they were moved, and I just call them Indians on a video. Um, but, you know, First of all, calling them Indians, um, which they don't like to be called because they're Native Americans. But, you know, the way that they were moved to uh, from their areas and things like that. Uh, and then seeing, obviously, the enslavement of black people and things like that that were bad as well. And then sort of seeing how it was still was and still is all right just notify me about fantasy basketball or whatever um but you know seeing the way that they were treated then and you know still aren't necessarily treated equally now um obviously things are better than they were in the 60s but still seeing the way that people are treated uh like that is um Part of the history of America, I guess, but I don't know. I just learning about history, specifically in America. I mean, those things are obviously big things that people should be know known about them, but they necessarily me weren't necessarily necessarily weren't the sole interest of mine. I really wanted to learn more about global things than. Uh, national things but that's that that's my thoughts on uh history and um yeah so we'll see you guys in the next one